Welcome everybody and good morning to ERIA's Hydrogen Working Group Press Conference. I'm Lydia Reddy, the Director of Communications for ERIA, and I thank all of you for taking the time to join us today. Our schedule today is very brief with three short presentations and welcoming remarks on the importance of hydrogen for carbon neutrality in ASEAN. We will also provide information about the working group and its work on hydrogen. After that, we have some time for question and answer, which I will start with some questions that were submitted with the registrations. To pose the question, please type it in the chat box at the bottom of your screen. We give questions from journalists priority, so please identify yourself when asking the question. And you can start asking and typing your questions in at any point during the conversation. For journalists who have further questions after the session concludes, please contact me and my email will address will be posted in the chat box. We do have Indonesian translations of the background in the press release. So if you'd like us to send them to you, please let us know. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce the CEO of IRIA, Mr. Koji Hachiyama, to give his opening remarks. Thank you, thank you, Lydia. And the honorable journalists and press conference attendees, a warm welcome to the press conference on the EAS Hydrogen Working Group. Just a bit of background about the area first. We are uh, an international organization that was established by an agreement of the leaders of 16 East Asian Summit, EAS, member countries in 2007. Area's main role is to conduct research and policy analysis, to facilitate ASEAN economic community building, and to support wider regional community building. In the coming decades, ASEAN and East Asia will continue to be the world's main growth engine. The world can see the potential and foreseeable positive impact of ASEAN and East Asian development. Community building is the key to maximizing the region's growth potential. And area is endorsed, uh, entrusted with the important com commitment of contributing to this process. Nevertheless, growth and development have come at a cost to the people on the planet as the world faces a growing number of climate-related disasters and changes. Immediate actions are needed from all stakeholders, governments, business, and consumers to build a fall of government and the fall of society, approach to strive for a sustainable mindset in policy making, business model, and lifestyles. In line with the seven sustainable development goal of the United Nations. ASEAN and the East Asian summit countries need, therefore, to seriously promote the use of renewable sources, energy efficiency, and energy trans transition measures to cleaner fuel. The use of new energy technology, such as carbon capture usage and storage, or carbon recycling, and hydrogen should also be incorporated along with the adoption of clean technologies. Hydrogen, hydrogen technology in particular should play a key role as an alternative to fossil fuel and can be applied across sectors, not only in industry, but also in power generation and transportation. Over the past couple of years, Iria has been conducting studies on the demand and supply potential of hydrogen in East Asia. In 2019, Iria launched the working group on the demand and supply potential of hydrogen energy in East Asia to discuss how to the EAS countries can shift to a hydrogen society. The group now has members from nine EAS countries. At the first meeting of the study on March 23rd, 2021, the nine countries' representatives 
and EDIA have come up with initial consultations on hydrogen's important contribution in achieving the long-term carbon neutrality mm -hmm. scenario. We shall learn about these important consultations shortly in this press conference. I hope that this first area, uh, EAS Hydrogen Working Group conclusions can play low as a starting point for the future uh, further exchange upon which we can achieve significant milestones toward the transition into a clean hydrogen society. Thank you very much for attending this event. Thank you, Hachiyama-san. <laughs> now I would like to introduce Mr. Shigeru Kimura, Area Special Advisor on Energy Affairs, who will give some background of energy demand in EAS and ASEAN and the importance of hydrogen. <clears throat> okay, uh, thank you very much, Lydia, uh, for your kind uh, introductions. And a very good morning, uh, distinguished uh, journalist, uh, energy expert, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for coming to this virtual press conference, uh, namely hydrogen as an important part of the uh, carbon neutrality in ASEAN. I'd like to make the uh, brief presentation of a hydrogen role for the uh, clean energy transition scenario for ASEAN around the year 2050 to uh, 80, that the target years. For making this presentation, uh, I prefer to the uh, uh, two report. One is uh, EAS Energy Outlook, updated by the uh, area in 2019-20. And also, Hachiyama-san mentioned, is uh, uh, area hydrogen study report, phase one, phase two, uh, 2018 and 2019. Uh, next, please. Firstly, uh, I show you the uh, uh, energy outlook of ASEAN. Area Working Group uh, updated the ES energy outlook for analyzing the energy saving potential, which is defined as the uh, BAU and the APS. APS including the aggressive uh, energy efficiency and the renewable energy target of energy demand. And uh, this slide shows the energy demand outlook of whole ASEAN up to 2050. Uh, due to the uh, stable uh, economic growth assumption, 4.3% uh, per annual uh, in 2070 to 50, uh, energy demand in ASEAN will, will increase significantly 2.8 times uh, in the same time, in the same period. And as a result, uh, share of the fossil fuel in 2050 uh, will be still 80, 88%, uh, 88% in BAU and 82% in APS. Uh, thus, uh, energy efficiency and the renewable will not be enough for ASEAN to achieve the, achieve the uh, uh, sustainable energy development by 2050 and after. Then, by the way, so EAS uh, stands for the uh, East Asia Summit, uh, which consists of the ASEAN 10 countries plus eight countries, Australia, China, India, Japan, Korea, New Zealand, Russia, Russia, and the United States. Uh, next, please. Uh, on the other hand, uh, decarbonization has been a global trend currently. A carbon neutral target year of many uh, OECD countries is a 2050, and China is a 2060, according to the announcement. In addition, EU considered to charge import tax on import goods from the carbon intensive countries at the EU border, so called as the uh, border adjustment measure measurement. These wind, <laughs> namely uh, net, to zero, net to zero emission, shall reach to Asia region, uh, including ASEAN, in soon. And the net to zero means to reduce fossil fuel consumption to almost zero. Next, please. So uh, uh, currently, ASEAN consume mainly coal and gas for power generations and oil for the uh, vehicles. So looking at the uh, left, -hand, left -hand chart. And uh, this situation will continue to 2050, even though the uh, APS scenarios, including the uh, energy efficiency and the renewable energies. The end use of the hydrogen will be the same as the fossil fuel. And thus, fossil fuel could be replaced by the hydrogen if hydrogen's uh, supply price shall be affordable. Next, please. Next, so uh, uh, hydrogen is produced by two ways, as you know. And one is a fossil fuel applying the uh, reforming and gasification technologies. And another is uh, renewable uh, electricity 
to be used for the uh, electrolysis. Arsene has a significant potential of the hydrogen production from coal and also the uh, uh, solar PV. But CCS is needed for production of the hydrogen from fossil fuels. In addition, uh, hydrogen supply cost is still an issue. Currently, uh, around the uh, 10 US dollar per kilogram, and will be needed to decrease around the uh, two to three uh, US dollar per kilogram in 2030 to 50. Through the uh, achieving uh, increase of hydrogen demand. Uh, and uh, innovative technology development uh, that is a uh, contribute to the cost down by strong leadership of the OECD countries. In addition, uh, average GDP per capita of ASEAN uh, will be the uh, 15,000 US dollar in 2050 from the uh, uh, 5,000 US dollar currently uh, under the uh, uh, annual GDP growth rate assumption 4.3% from 2017 to 50. So that uh, after, after 2050, ASEAN could use hydrogen under the two conditions, affordable hydrogen supply cost and the increase of the uh, ASEAN income levels. Thus, hydrogen will be one an option for ASEAN to achieve the uh, net zero emission around the uh, 2060 to 80. Next, please. As a sample of the uh, leadership of OECD countries, I'd like to introduce three NEDO Japan hydrogen project being implemented in the Japan and the Asia regions. First one is uh, AHEAD uh, hydrogen project. AHEAD is the name of the business consortium uh, being implemented in uh, Brunei Darussalam, uh, which is produced the hydrogen from processed gas come from the energy plant and transport it to Kawasaki city, Japan by uh, Michiru Cicro uh, Hexan, uh, MCH, uh, one of the uh, uh, chemical product using the uh, container ship or uh, ordinary chemical tankers. Second is a uh, high store hydrogen project. It now being con uh, implemented in South Australia, which it produced the hydrogen from brown coal, applying the gasification process and uh, transport it to Kobe City, Japan. Uh, by liquid hydrogen using the uh, specific tanker, same as the uh, air energy tanker. Third one is uh, FH2R hydrogen project, now conducted, in, implemented in uh, Fukushima Prefecture, Japan, and uh, which is produced the hydro hydrogen uh, from uh, electrolysis using the, using the electricity from uh, solar PV systems. Next, please. This slide shows the uh, CO2 emission in 2017 and the 2050 of BAU and the APS. And uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, due to significant increase of energy demand in 2070 to 850, CO2 emission will also increase rapidly from the uh, 377 uh, million carbon ton in 2017 to the uh, 1,217 million carbon ton in 2050 in case of BAU. Uh, if ASEAN uh, dedicate promotion of the uh, uh, energy efficiency and uh, renewable uh, deployment of renewable energy, CO2 emission in 2050 uh, will sharply go down to the uh, 876 uh, million carbon ton. But uh, APS will, be, will still not be sustainable uh, because the uh, uh, CO2 emission level is uh, quite high from the uh, current uh, 2017. Uh, just uh, following the uh, uh, green energy transition scenario uh, could be drawn for the ASEAN. At the initial stage, uh, applying the uh, traditional renewable energies, uh, ASEAN uh, is, uh, has a, a huge uh, in, uh, rich hydropower sources and geothermal and, and also existing solar PV systems and the coal to gas, uh, coal power plant, uh, change to the gas power plant. Then uh, medium stage, applying the uh, innovative uh, renewable energy, advanced type of solar PV, more efficient type of the uh, solar PV, and uh, SMR, uh, the uh, small modular reactor is uh, part one of the uh, nuclear, uh, power react uh, nuclear power reactors. And uh, this is also an uh, option for the uh, some ASEAN countries. At the final stage, uh, applying the hydrogen and the CCUS. 
so that uh, uh, year by year applying the uh, uh, technologies, then uh, gradually decrease the CO2 emission. So that is uh, uh, some uh, one of the uh, 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 clean, clean energy transition scenario for the ASEAN. But uh, we need to pay attention because the uh, ASEAN is a very diverse, uh, diverse countries. Uh, so that uh, uh, we we need to pay. so this uh, uh, clean energy transition scenario is uh, uh, should be different among the uh, ASEAN countries. Next, please. So under these situations, uh, Hachimasa mentioned. Uh, increase to the uh, uh, hydrogen utilization in the ES region. Uh, area formulated the ES hydrogen working group meeting. Uh, the meetings uh, uh, group's uh, aim is uh, sharing hydrogen policy among ES region and the sharing uh, progress of uh, hydrogen project. Uh, now, Lydia, you can see the uh, final. Uh, yes, we see number eight, e EAS hydrogen working group. Okay. okay and the increase correct understanding of the hydrogen. Then uh, uh, hydrogen uh, working group meeting was held 23 March. So uh, they talk about the uh, hydrogen role toward the net zero emission uh, in the ES region. So that uh, area uh, today, uh, area would like to share the discussion result of the uh, uh, hydro, uh, hydrogen working group meeting. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your kind attentions. Thank you very much, Kimura Sensei. And now it's my great honor to introduce Dr. Saleh Abdurraham, expert staff for the Minister of Energy and Mineral Resources of the Republic of Indonesia. And he will share Indonesia's perspective on hydrogen as an energy source. Dr. Thank Saleh. You. Thank you, Ibu Lydia. Uh, distinguished participants of this press conference, a very good morning. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank AREA for hosting this event. Uh, to update uh, us with the progress of the activities of area working group on hydrogen where I joined that uh, workshop. Uh, during the workshop, we see that uh, we saw that uh, ASEAN and East ASEAN countries uh, share many things in common with regards to accelerating the penetration of new and renewable energy uh, on our energy mix and to do all our level best to participate on the global effort to meet the target of Paris Agreement. Uh, Indonesia is committed uh, to implement our NDC target, that is to reduce our greenhouse gas emission by 29% in 2030 uh, with our own effort and 41% with international support. Based on Indonesia NDC target, energy sector must reduce greenhouse gas emission in the amount of around 314 million ton from our business as usual scenario, or around 37% from national reduction target, uh, and increase to around uh, 400 million ton with international support. To achieve this target, we need to meet our 23% target of renewable energy from primary energy mix in 2025, uh, as well as uh, achieving the 1% reduction uh, on energy intensity per year to 2025. We believe that if we do these two main uh, programs, we can meet our uh, RE target as well as the NDC target. We are optimistic to achieve our target as we see the price of RE is decreasing, especially for solar and wind and also with the brighter prospect of other sources of energy, including hydrogen, that can support our energy transition program. As we can see from uh, Kimura Sensei presentation uh, on EAS outlook, uh, the role of hydrogen and CCS, CCUS is very significant in achieving carbon neutrality in ASEAN, uh, say around 2060 to around 2080. For Indonesia, we can produce hydrogen either from gas or coal with TCS or green hydrogen with hydro, geothermal, biomass, and others. We have started working on hydrogen. Some studies are now undertaken in Indonesia, such as that the study conducted by Pertamina to produce green hydrogen from geothermal 
And the study in Sumba by our IPP, independent uh, power producers from hybrid solar and wind power. These studies are still in early stage and we therefore will come and support the initiative by area to establish this working group to find ways and cooperation to support us and countries in accelerating the production of hydrogen, including I hope find some ways of getting better and better green financial support for the RE development. We also, in this opportunity, I would like also to invite and offer all investors to explore the huge potential of Indonesia to produce blue and green hydrogen in many parts of the country. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you, Dr. Saleh. And now over to Dr. Joko Purwanto, Iria's energy economist, who will share information on the East Asia <clears throat> Summit Hydrogen Working Group. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, all participants just would like to uh, read out the conclusion that have been uh, achieved during the first hydrogen working group meeting. So next slide, please. The first point, the area working group on the study of hydrogen potential in the East Asian summit region held its first meeting of the 2020-2021 research project from 10 a.m. Jakarta time on 23rd March 2021 through a virtual meeting platform. There were nine participants from selected East Asian summit countries, represented Australia, Green Jerusalem, China, India, Indonesia, Japan, Malaysia, New Zealand, and Thailand. These countries are aware of the importance of hydrogen from both the supply and demand sides. The meeting discussed whether hydrogen would contribute to the goal of carbon neutrality as a long-term policy or not? If so, the question becomes how to upgrade hydrogen as a commercial energy source like oil and gas. Japan introduced Japan's hydrogen policy and strategy to achieve carbon neutrality towards 2050 and highlighted the important role of hydrogen. Other participants reported their current progress on hydrogen production and consumption as well as national policies on hydrogen. Australia and New Zealand emphasized their role in hydrogen production and pointed out the importance of a hydrogen supply chain to export hydrogen to other East Asian summit countries. The working group members agreed on the important role of hydrogen in achieving carbon neutrality as a long-term strategy, but at the same time, recognized many issues and challenges regarding high utilization of hydrogen. Reduction of hydrogen supply costs, which consists of production and transportation, is a technically crucial issue. In addition, increasing hydrogen consumption with governmental support, such as feed-in tariffs, is politically essential. Some meeting participants suggested there may be merit in setting a preliminary target to start co-firing gas hydrogen power generation at existing gas power plants, beginning with 5% around 2030, led by strong leadership from developed countries in the East Asian summit region. The meeting proposed increasing opportunities for discussing hydrogen's contribution to decarbonization and collaboration framework to highly utilize hydrogen in East Asian summit region. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joko. So now I'm going to uh, switch over to the question and answer period. And we do have questions that have been posed during the registration process. So I'll start with that. But I'd like to remind anyone, if you still have other questions, please feel free to type them into the chat box, which you can find at the, the bottom of your screen. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with a general question, which was, what would be the next steps in the area EAS hydrogen study and what are the main expected outcomes? So Kimura Sante or, or uh, Joko? Uh, thank you very much, Didias. Uh, and now uh, Idia is uh, uh, conducting the uh, phase three studies. Uh, phase three studies is really focused on the uh, uh, hydrogen production from the uh, unused uh, 
energies. So there are uh, high potential of the energy, but uh, due to the uh, small demand, uh, this uh, cannot uh, develop, will develop the uh, 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 energies. That is, uh, we call the uh, unused energies. For example, is uh, uh, flared gas uh, at uh, gas field. So uh, that is uh, uh, something like gas is uh, burning uh, into the uh, uh, airs. But uh, if we recover the, this gas and extract the hydrogen, it is a uh, 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 very good idea and uh, reduce the uh, also co contribute to the uh, reduction of CO2. Then uh, also <laughs> another idea is uh, like uh, uh, Sarawak state in uh, Malaysia. Uh, there are a lot of uh, hydropower potential, but uh, electricity demand in uh, hydro, uh, Sarawak uh, state and including the uh, Sabah. Uh, electricity demand is not so much compared to the uh, peninsula side. So that uh, now is uh, a big potential of the hydro power is uh, not, uh, not well uh, developed. So that uh, develop the hydro, hydro, hydro uh, power systems in Sarawak city, Sarawak state, then produce the uh, hydrogen and bring and uh, transport to the uh, peninsula uh, uh, Malaysia. Then uh, peninsula Malaysia use, uh, mix the uh, hydrogen to the uh, gas power plant. So that uh, pen, uh, uh, Manisra, uh, uh, peninsula Man Malaysia site can reduce the uh, CO2 emission at, uh, uh, from the uh, gas power uh, plant. So that uh, we are now, and also uh, some of the uh, uh, solar PV, it's sometimes it's, uh, uh, due to the strong uh, solar radiation, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, output is uh, it's, uh, increasing rapidly, but the uh, demand is a uh, 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 constant, uh, it's a uh, fixed, so that uh, this uh, uh, ex uh, over, uh, exceeds, exceed amount is uh, like a containment. So we can use the we can use this amount this electricity for producing hydrogen like uh, something like uh, storage. So now that is uh, uh, one study point. Then uh, second one is uh, uh, I think uh, uh, hydrogen supply chain uh, value chain is very important uh, because the. Uh, some country is uh, expertise uh, uh, advantage to produce the uh, hydrogen, but uh, some countries not advantage to produce the hydrogen. So that uh, we need some uh, hydrogen supply chain, like uh, an energy supply chain. So that uh, pro uh, from the uh, uh, hydrogen producing country to uh, hydrogen consuming country. So that uh, second our uh, study point is, uh, uh, how to uh, how to set up the uh, uh, minimum uh, transport route or uh, value chain, uh, applying the uh, cost of minimum approach. Then uh, still uh, we are now uh, 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 conducting the uh, two major uh, studies as a phase three studies. That is my my answer to. <laughs> Now, now uh, area is now conducting uh, still phase three. And did, did anyone else want to add to that, Dr. Sale or yeah. Th th thank you, Lydia. I think uh, we support uh, what pa Kimura has has uh, informed us that we will continue with the next activities. And I hope that uh, when we set up the value chain, as uh, pa Kimura said, that we. We can utilize the flare gas uh, in Indonesian case, for instance, that we have the regulation that that limits the release of uh, gas flare, and that uh, the the producers uh, of, of the downstream activities can utilize the uh, the gas flare. So in that case, I think uh, if we can have some cooperation with uh, ASEAN or Japan companies. Uh, to develop the, the the pilot project on the use of uh, gas flares uh, as a one case study to add up our uh, uh, working group activities, that would be 
uh, much expected and appreciated, Pak Kimura. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Lydia. Pak Joko. Uh, Lydia. Yeah, hello. Uh, yes, Pak Saleh. Thank you so much. Uh, I just would like to add that the, the previous phase two of the hydrogen study of area is available. I just type it uh, in the chat box. Please feel free to download it. <clears throat> Hi, uh, sorry Bolivia. I cut out there. So. My my signal dropped. Are we ready to go to the next question? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Great. Thanks. Um, so we, we have another one that was written in, and then we have a couple uh, that was written in during the registration. Then we have a couple that also came in uh, through the chat box. So I'll go to the other one from the registration. How can developing countries such as the Philippines benefit from using hydrogen as a source of fuel and what are the pros and cons? Kimura Sensei? Uh, yes, uh, <clears throat> I think that uh, yeah, uh, the currently is, uh, uh, is hydrogen is very expensive and uh, uh, supply amount is very limited. So that uh, currently is not easy to use, but uh, why we need hydrogen? That is uh, decarbonization and also the uh, net zero emissions. Then uh, uh, I already mentioned, so uh, uh, we see the, many of the OECD countries, they set the uh, target of the uh, net zero emission and around the 2050. So that, uh, but uh, uh, in the future, uh, I think uh, uh, this uh, uh, wind is, uh, uh, shall come to the uh, uh, Asian regions. Then uh, need to set up the, uh, 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 maybe uh, even though the Philippines, they have to uh, announce some uh, net zero emission uh, scenarios. In this case, so uh, hydrogen is a benefit. And uh, in case of uh, Philippines, uh, I think uh, Philippines is uh, uh, rich coal mining uh, countries. So that uh, gas creation uh, technology with CCS to produce the hydrogen is uh, one of very big benefit to the uh, uh, Philippines. And also Philippines is uh, also a rich uh, country of the uh, geothermal. The geothermal is uh, classified to the uh, 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 renewable energies. So that using the electricity from geothermal to apply the uh, electrolysis to produce the uh, hydrogen. So that, that is uh, also, also benefit. Then uh, maybe in the future, uh, I guess that is my, my personal view. Uh, Philippines can export the hydrogen to the uh, Japan and the neighboring countries uh, produce from the uh, coal and uh, geothermals. And also solar PV is one of the option for mm -hmm. so that uh, maybe uh, we have we, we, we should have the uh, maybe long time long term uh, uh, looking at the long 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 term uh, 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 transitions or uh, uh, scenarios. Then uh, hydrogen uh, will be a very big ben uh, benefit one of the benefit for the uh, Philippines. So that is my uh, answer to the uh, question from Philippines. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Does anyone else want to add anything or go on to the next question? Okay, next question to all the panelists. How effective can hydrogen be as a method of lowering carbon emissions compared to other methods like switching from coal or oil to gas and LNG? ASEAN countries use a lot of coal now and LNG use is increasing, e.g. in the Philippines and Vietnam. Hello. Uh, uh, excuse me. So, uh, repeat again, please. 
<clears throat> How effective can hydrogen be as a method of lowering carbon emissions compared to other methods like switching from coal or oil to gas and LNG? And ASEAN countries use a lot of coal now and LNG use is increasing like in the Philippines and Vietnam. Yeah, so that uh, maybe uh, uh, like, like uh, uh, step by step. Uh, but anyway, I know the uh, Philippines is uh, fully depend on the uh, coal for power generations and Indonesia also and, and other ASEAN countries also. And uh, these countries uh, firstly shift to gas. It's uh, one, one option, so it's no, not easy to the uh, uh, shift from coal to gas. But uh, if shift to the gas, uh, CO2 emission uh, will be half because the uh, emission factor is half of the uh, gas. Then maybe next step uh, uh, in, in parallel is uh, uh, ASEAN countries to increase the uh, uh, low price of uh, uh, solar PV systems. And uh, there are two types of the renewable energies, uh, solar and uh, wind. But uh, according to the uh, IDENA's uh, studies, so wind is an, uh, not suitable in, the, in, the, uh, uh, in, the, in this region because of the <laughs> uh not strong wind in uh, this region so that uh, uh, solar pv is one of options so uh, uh shifting to gas and the solar pv is a first step to the uh, uh decarbonizations uh but uh i think that uh, uh these ASEAN countries uh, continuously use the uh, existing power plant but uh due to the uh, uh demand increasing they need the uh, uh, additional power plant that should be gas, then uh, maybe uh, replacing to gas so that uh, emission is uh, is uh, is uh, saturating or some, something like. That. Then uh, maybe uh, going to the uh, 2050 to 2060, uh, collaboration with the OECD countries such as Japan is ASEAN seek for the uh, uh, utilization of the hydrogen and also the CCUS. That is uh, my recommendation to, to the, uh, that question. So my answer is okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Dr. Sale, would you like to yeah. add to that? Uh, thank you, Lydia. I, I think uh, from our perspective that we have to make use uh, of all available option to meet our uh, NDC target at this stage and maybe later to go for the net zero uh, emission. In our case that we started to uh, use the biomass, uh, inject the biomass, co-firing we call it here. We inject like 5% biomass to our uh, existing coal power plant. If you uh, uh, imagine that we have like maybe around 40,000 uh, megawatts of uh, around that uh, amounts of coal power plant, 10% uh, so or 5%, it will have some big impact to reduce uh, our emission. Also, when, when we have the uh, hydrogen getting uh, a good price from six US dollar per kilogram to around three or two uh, US dollar per kilograms, then we may start, start to inject like a certain percentage of hydrogen to our gas power plant. That is also one of the recommendation, uh, I believe, with the working group to, to start uh, doing the, the co-firing of, uh, uh, of hydrogen to existing gas power plant and start it uh, like in developed countries or, or in uh, developing countries like Indonesia where we have some uh, companies uh, uh, producing like uh, coal power plants from other countries, uh, Japan or other countries, we can start to uh, do that effort. So not just uh, the, the injection uh, is injected in developed countries, but we can also start to do the activities where the, uh, I hope, um, this is my expectation, where Japanese uh, companies uh, exist like in Indonesia to do like uh, on, on the coal power plant. That's my expectation. <laughs> Um, I want to follow that up with a question that uh, came in through the registration process, which was about what about um, hydrogen from biomass 
should that be also promoted for inclusive growth? Mm. That, that is uh, one of ideas and uh, uh, also so hydrogen is uh, produced from the uh, biomass. Mm. But uh, currently is, uh, uh, so far I, ha I have no idea on the uh, uh, biomass hydrogen <laughs> product uh, promoted by yeah. Japan, but uh, mm. biomass is also one of, but uh, uh, same as the, uh, you know, the uh, 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 biofuels, uh, bioethanol and the biodiesels, uh, technically okay, but uh, uh, if no support, uh, government support, as uh, people no use of the uh, bio, bioethanol and biodiesels because of the uh, high, 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 high cost, high price so compared to the uh, ordinary gasoline and the diesel. So that uh, uh, biomass bio is one option for producing hydrogen, but the uh, problem is uh, uh, cost, uh, hydrogen pro production cost. And, uh, and also uh, amount is uh, 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 production amount, is it a huge or a small? That is a, a still question mark, I think. So how, uh, one of the other questions that came in is how to um, address the issue of cost. So hydrogen is, is expensive compared to coal and fossil fuel. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, act actually uh, for the uh, power generation, hydrogen is very, very expensive compared to the uh, natural gas and the coal. Uh, but uh now that is a uh, current situation uh 10 dollar us dollar is uh, also hydrogen use is uh, is just started the amount is very very small so uh, uh one very important point to reduce to contribute to reduce the uh, hydrogen production cost that is uh scale of the demand if demand is is uh, uh, scale scale up a uh, uh, huge amount is a cost is, is going down. That is an economic reason. So that uh, uh, that is uh, like a chicken and an egg. So <laughs> uh, how to increase the uh, demand? Then how to produce the uh, affordable production, uh, hydrogen production? Is that something like uh, uh, chicken and eggs? But uh, uh, for the uh, demand side, maybe government support should be needed. Uh, you know the uh, uh, feed in tariff that is uh, uh, support the uh, solar PV systems to increase uh, to uh, solar PVs. Uh, then uh, uh, feed in tariff is uh, usually uh, uh, price of the electricity is a uh, ten cent or uh, uh, twelve cent, but uh, FIT is uh, set to the twenty cent. So that the business people is a very very attractive to produce the uh, electricity using the uh, solar PV because the uh, government can buy the uh, 20 cent. That is FIT. So that uh, solar PV is rapidly increased in Japan. Then that's the same as the uh, hydrogen. So that uh, if, if so some uh, uh, power company to use the hydrogen, so we provide the, uh, some in incentives like FIT. So uh, in case of demand side is uh, uh, the government support very important and uh, 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 decreasing decrease of the uh, uh, hydrogen production cost, maybe uh, technology development, technology support like a uh, NEDO, uh, that uh, support is very, very, very important. And uh, I introduced the uh, three, three uh, project, uh, Brunei, uh, Australia, and Japan, that is uh, 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 seeking uh, uh, one of one of our uh, purpose is uh, how to reduce the uh, production cost. And there's a, a related question for Dr. Saleh, asking specifically for Indonesia. During the early stages of developing the hydrogen ecosystem, would Indonesia rely heavily on fossil fuels or use uh, renewable energy resources like wind and, and solar? So it's been partially answered, but specifically to the Indonesia context, Dr. Saleh. Uh, thank you. But before that, I think if I may add the point from Timura uh, that 
one of the recommendation of this working group is to start uh, considering to put the, the, the target of certain percents, like 5% of hydrogen on the uh, gas power plant. I think this is a good indication of creating a market. Uh, we start thinking of uh, creating a captive, a, a captive market for the hydrogen. Secondly, I think uh, we have a good experience with Japan uh, on developing the CCS, CCUS in Indonesia, which is still very expensive. But I think with the scheme of like a joint crediting mechanism, then we can uh, sort of address uh, these issues and we can talk about the, the carbon trading, things like that. So I think there is uh, a room for us to uh, accelerate the hydrogen. We, we can do the same approach when we develop the hydrogen in ASEAN countries, especially here in Indonesia. We have some option to accelerate that. On the questions, so whether we will use the route, uh, the blue hydrogen route or green hydrogen route, I think this is the, the, the unique of hydrogen. I think when we talk, uh, when we try to uh, reduce the consumption of coal on our energy mix, we need also to consider the downstreaming of the coal industry. And I think in addition to what we do now, like uh, DMA and others, uh, we may consider uh, hydrogen as one of the downstreaming activities of coal uh, and gas so that we still can utilize our resources uh, on a sustainable way and it can produce a hydrogen. But if we develop the blue hydrogen, we have to also to incorporate the CCS uh, and CCUS, okay? At the same time, we also, uh, we started actually, as I, as I said before, that we started to do the study on using the geothermal uh, as a power uh, source to separate the, 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 the water to get the, the hydrogen, okay? And then also we, we start to do uh, the research in Sumba uh, our iconic uh, island uh, to work with uh, the solar and the wind to uh, produce electricity to, uh, uh, to on the electrolyzers to produce the hydrogen. So I think we, we follow all the dynamics, all the, the technology is being uh, developed uh, worldwide, especially in Japan. And I, I, I may personally hope that uh, this working group can even uh, uh, achieving a much accelerated target of ASEAN countries, especially we in here in Indonesia, to utilize our big potential of hydro, uh, geothermal. We have a big hydro in Papua. We have a big hydro in Kalimantan Utara. We have big uh, potential of uh, biomass as well as, as a main source of electricity for producing the, the hydrogen. Thank you, Lydia. Thanks. Um, one more follow-up question on the on the pricing. Where I think when Murasan said when you were speaking, did you include the cost of um, supply? So the question is when when the speaker mentioned the current H two supply cost of ten USD per kilogram, was this only the product production cost, or does it include storage and transportation? Uh, yes, that is. Uh, 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 retail cost, it means uh, production cost plus the uh, uh, transportation cost. Okay, great. Uh, and then there. Not on the production cost. Okay, and we're yeah. actually running over time, but there's another question about what about hydrogen from nuclear power? Uh, that is uh, uh, one, one of the ideas uh, because the uh, nuclear are not emit CO2, so that uh, generate electricity by the uh, nuclear power plant, then uh, apply the, uh, this electricity to electrolysis. This is uh, one of the ideas. And uh, now, uh, in, in terms of the nuclear power nucleus, uh, uh, SM, a small, uh, small uh, modular reactor no. is. Uh, 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 now uh, are becoming popular, so that uh, it's more safety and uh, it is small, so easy to uh, treat. Uh, so that uh, uh, my, 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 my personal view is uh, uh, nuclear uh, 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 
hydrogen production from a nuclear, nuclear electricity is uh, uh, one, one of the options. And then one last uh, question. What about the, idea. yeah, sorry. Uh, one, uh, what's the optimum energy mix currently and future? Uh, in terms of the uh, energy mix, uh, uh, so talking about the uh, uh, 2050 or 2060 energy mix. So uh, if so, we uh, give up to use the uh, fossil fuel, uh, our option is uh, uh, renewable energies, nuclear power plant, nuclear, and uh, hydrogen, ammonia, and uh, CCUS. Uh, so that, uh, but maybe if we if we use the uh, applied the CCUS, we can remain some uh, coal and uh, gas uh, use. Uh, so that, uh, but anyway, uh, I think uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, long, 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 long <laughs> uh, after, like uh, 2050, maybe renewable will be uh, uh, main. Then uh, plus hydrogen and uh, ammonia and uh, plus CCUS. So even though the uh, hydrogen, so some some country could produce the hydrogen from uh, fossil fuel, so that the CCUS is important. And also, uh, even though the even if the 2050, some country continues to use the uh, gas power plant, so that the CCUS is very important. So that uh, in the future, so currently. Uh, gas, coal, coal, oil, gas. Uh, uh, in, in terms of the uh, energy mix for power generation, uh, coal and gas is the main and uh, renewables. But uh, drast uh, uh, drastically change to the uh, renewable plus hydrogen. And uh, but the CCS is uh, not the power, not the power plant, but uh, uh, some. Uh, gas power plant with uh, with uh, carbon captures. So that is, uh, I can draw the uh, future uh, energy mix. Great, thank you. I'm gonna wrap this up, but I'd like to ask the panelists if they have any last thoughts, anything they'd like to add, Dr. Saleh? Uh, I think, uh, I again, I would like to appreciate and thanks the area for uh, establishing this working group. I believe that uh, many things we have to uh, work in the future to the point is to accelerate the utilization of hydrogen in the region in ASEAN to help us to meet our uh, NDC target as well as to prepare our net zero emission target. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joko or Kimura Sensei and or Kimura Sensei. Yeah, so uh, today, so uh, uh, we earlier talk about hydrogen, but uh, uh, my personal view is uh, hydrogen uh, will be used commercially <laughs> around the uh, 20, 2050, uh, before five years, after five years. So that, uh, but, uh, and also the, uh, in 2050, many countries say, say the uh, net of the emissions. So that uh, fossil fuel is all, all very, very small. So, uh, uh, that is a future primary uh, energy mix of the primary energy supply. So that, that is a kind of the target. Then this is, we are now, it stands here. Then how to, <laughs> how to uh, uh, going to the, uh, this target? That is uh, uh, our task. And uh, how to prepare the uh, more uh, appropriate roadmap. Then uh, in this case, we need to pay attention is uh, uh, affordability of the energy is very important, especially in uh, ASEAN, ASEAN regions. That is my uh, uh, final uh, comment. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you. And Joko? Yes, just would like to add briefly two things. The first one is the potential of hydrogen as an, as an energy carrier. So in the future, it should replace also the role of LNG that uh, someone has asked. Uh, in the in the chat box, and yeah, and 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 in and in this sense, uh, hydrogen will be transportable uh, and will be suitable in uh, archipelago countries like Indonesia, and the Philippines, as well as in Japan. And the second one also is the uh, complementary 
the nature of hydrogen that it can take care of the intermittence intermittencies of renewable energy such as uh, uh, wind and solar power and hydrogen can 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 deal with this uh, drawbacks of renewable energy thank you so much thank you and thank you to all of the panelists and especially dr saleh for for joining us today and thank, thank you, you to all of the participants and journalists anyone who has any follow-up questions again feel free to reach out contact me and i can track somebody down and try and get an answer. And with that, I wish you all who are celebrating a very happy and healthy month of Ramadan and look forward to seeing you all again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Much. Thank you, Dr. Sare. Thank you, Pak Kimura Sensei. Thank you, Joko. Thank you, Dr. Sare. Thank you, Kimura Sensei. Thank you, Kimura Sensei. Thank you, Kimura Sensei.